The Pennsylvania Dutch community has made significant contributions to food traditions across America, but it's their cakes and pies and pastries that are really celebrated and for which they are best known. Today I'll share four recipes that showcase this region's rich culinary heritage. Montgomery pie is a double-layered pie you'll not forget. Pumpkin whoopie pies that are so delicious you can't put one down. And apple dumplings that look just like that. And chocolate whoopie pies with vanilla buttercream filling. All of these on Martha Bakes. Enjoy. If you're a fan of the Pennsylvania Dutch classic known as shoe fly pie, you're going to love this lighter lemony cousin, Montgomery pie. Legend has it that this pie got its name from a cookbook author and food columnist who tasted it in Montgomery, Alabama. He liked it so much, he tried to contact the baker for the recipe, but learned the baker couldn't read or write, and there was no recipe. So upon returning to Montgomery, he watched the baker prepare it and recorded the recipe and named it Montgomery Pie. I think he should have named it Mrs. So-and-So's Pie from Montgomery, but that's a matter of opinion. I wanna show you how to make a decorative edged crust first. And I'm rolling out prepared pat brise. Now we need it a little bit larger than our glass nine inch pie plate. Uh, and the way I sort of eyeball it is to look at it like that, it looks like it's gonna be the right size. And now just roll this up and carefully roll it out into the dish. There should be at least a half inch overhang. Press it in with your thumbs or your fingers like this. And then with the blade of a knife, cut it off right at the edge of the dish. If it has gotten warm, put it right back in the freezer just for a couple of seconds to firm up the crust so that you can cut it nicely and evenly. Now to make this nice little bear's tooth edge, cut all the way around the edge with the point of a sharp knife. The object is to turn every other one of these little bear's teeth in like that and you go all the way around, and that will be your cute crust. So here's our crust, chilled. Take a piece of parchment paper, large enough to make a liner for this. Now here's our pie weights. This is a collection of beans that I've used for years and years and years. Set your timer for 25 minutes, you remove the beans and the paper, and then bake it for another 10 minutes or so. So now for the bottom layer of our Montgomery pie, one egg, a half a cup of molasses, a half a cup of light brown sugar packed. Whisk that together. Make sure you're using unsulfured molasses. It's better for this particular pie. One tablespoon of flour, and a half a cup of water. And my favorite addition is the zest of one lemon and the juice of a lemon. So this is ready to put into the crust as soon as we have the top layer, the cake batter, ready. So in a bowl of the mixer, cream four tablespoons of butter and one cup of sugar this is a very plain, simple cake batter. While that's creaming, mix together. One and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, a half a teaspoon of baking soda. And this is such a simple cake that you could easily mix it right in this bowl without even doing the uh, mixer. But we started, we'll finish. A teaspoon of vanilla one large egg, and we have a half a cup of buttermilk. So now add the flour to your creamed mixture, a little buttermilk, and the rest of your flour. Very good. At this time, make sure your oven is preheated to 425 degrees. And now pour this molasses mixture right into the shell. 
See how thin it is? And now dollop the cake batter as if you were dolloping biscuits on top of a cobbler all over the top. Kind of an ingenious method for a double layer pie. Try to get this cake batter covering as much of the molasses as possible. The cake does get some volume and covers over the molasses, which then, of course, does thicken while it bakes. And now get that right into the oven. Don't spill, don't trip. 425 degrees, bake for 15 minutes, then reduce the oven to 350. And we'll check until it's well done, 35 to 40 minutes longer. So here's what the pie looks like when it's been cooled and sits for a while. It is so beautiful with that crackle topping. Would you like to see what it looks like inside? Gooey and crunchy. Now this is a very, very rich pie. So I would suggest a small piece to start. You can always go back for seconds. Lifts out very nicely. Interesting. Very interesting and very pretty. Dollop of whipped cream. What an interesting regional take on an old favorite. Thanks Mrs. So-and-so from Montgomery for inventing a very unusually delicious pie. Food historians believe whoopie pies originated in Pennsylvania where they were often made from leftover chocolate cake batter. There are countless flavor combinations, but today I'm making one that I think you'll really love, spiced pumpkin whoopie pies. And I'm going to fill them with a cream cheese frosting. At our house up in Maine, whoopie pies are very popular. Three cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of coarse salt, two tablespoons of cinnamon, a tablespoon of cloves, all the flavors that go into a good pumpkin pie filling, and one tablespoon of powdered ginger. Also add a teaspoon of baking powder and a teaspoon of baking soda. These will help the whoopie pies get nice and fluffy. So this is the dry ingredients, which will be added to the pumpkin filling. Now, the pumpkin, three cups of pumpkin puree. You can make your own pumpkin puree if you care to, but you can also use canned pumpkin. One teaspoon of vanilla, a cup of vegetable oil, and we're using unflavored vegetable oil, like a safflower oil will do. Two cups of dark brown sugar, packed, and two eggs. So all of these ingredients go into this bowl. Use your whisk and stir all of this together. Looks like a lot. It is a lot. Makes 12 finished whoopie pies. Smells so good. It gets you in the mood for the autumn. And now add your dry ingredients. You can sprinkle the dry ingredients a little at a time. Put this over here and whisk this in. It's a nice batter because you don't have to get out the mixer. You can make lots and lots of these. It's great to have them for a party. I remember going to a party last summer and they had maybe four or five different flavors of whoopie pies. That was the dessert and people went nuts. The batter gets heavier and heavier. So at one point you'll find that the whisk is not going to do it. And you can use your big scraper to finally incorporate everything together. And I find it's best to scoop these cookies onto parchment lined baking sheets with an ice cream scoop so that you have all identically sized cookies. If they're all different shapes, they won't fit together nicely and they won't look like whoopie pies. So each sheet uh, will take about eight cookies. But make this level scoop. So make sure your oven is preheated to 350 degrees. 
bake until the cookies just start to crack on top and a toothpick inserted into the center comes out clean. That'll take about 15 minutes. Let cool completely in the pan on a wire rack. So for the cream cheese frosting, it's the same recipe we all love and adore. One stick of butter, eight ounces of cream cheese. Let that get nicely creamed. Three cups of sifted confectioner's sugar. Get all those lumps out of that confectioner's sugar. And one teaspoon of the best vanilla. Let's make sure that's really mixed with the butter. And what I like about the cream cheese frosting is that it's not only tasty, but it's so easy to use. And it will take three cups of confectioner's sugar. And so that is your beautiful, creamy cream cheese frosting. Mm, so great. Now this can be made up to a day in advance. Just keep it in a bowl in the fridge, well covered, and then pipe it between your pumpkin whoopie pie halves. And I'll show you how easy that is. We have a bag already filled. This is what the whoopie pies look like when they're cooled. See a little bit of cracking on the top? Nicely flat on the bottom, all a uniform size. So pipe a large dollop of frosting on half of each whoopie pie, then top with the other half. So neat, so uniform, so utterly delicious. Make sure you chill these whoopie pies for 30 minutes before you serve them, and you can keep them well wrapped for up to three days. Aren't those cute? These are so easy, so delicious. I guarantee you'll be making them again and again for your family and your friends. Enjoy. If you're torn between making spice-filled baked apples or your favorite apple pie, this old-fashioned Pennsylvania Dutch recipe might just be the perfect solution for the best of both worlds, apple dumplings. We're choosing a really nice firm apple for the dumpling. Peel the apples, leaving the stem intact, and we are going to core them partially. This recipe is for six apples, and we're going to bake the apples for approximately an hour. So now use a good apple core like this, and just go about three quarters of the way up the apple, and pull that out, and hopefully all of the seeds too. Excellent. All done. Now get these sugared and seasoned into a baking dish. And I'm leaving this on because that's part of the charm of the entire dumpling. And in a bowl, a quarter of a cup of light brown sugar mixed with six tablespoons of dark raisins, some cinnamon, one teaspoon of cinnamon, the zest of one lemon. Now notice I've taken it off in strips. That has a little bit of texture to the apples. And four tablespoons of room temperature softened butter. And this whole mixture gets inserted right into those hollowed out cores of the apples. Take a little bit of this mixture and insert it into each apple. This adds a tremendous amount of flavor in the apple and it's a surprise to the person who's eating the apple. And you see it goes very easily and quickly. Oh, I missed the seeds in that one. Just use a little quarter teaspoon measuring spoon and dig them out. See, there are some seeds left in here by mistake. Using an offset spatula like this is by far the most efficient way of filling the cavity. There. So, three tablespoons of water. Put the apples right into a 350 degree oven and bake for one hour. And then let these apples cool completely and then you're ready to make the dumplings. Now comes the fun part. 
On a lightly floured surface, roll your dough, and this is a third of a recipe of pot brise. Roll it into an eight by 14 inch rectangle. Out of this rectangle, we'll get two triangles for two apples. So there, that's pretty much what we're looking for. And I have cut out a nine inch equilateral triangle. And you should be able to get two triangles out of this rectangle of dough. So practice up on your geometry skills, bakers, and delight in the fact that you can still remember something of the eighth grade or ninth grade whenever you took geometry. Save these big scraps because these will be your decorative leaves. And there we have two perfect triangles. And these should be transferred immediately to a baking sheet and chilled again. I want to show you how to cut out some pretty leaves. So using the straight side of your cutter, make leaves that look like they belong on an apple tree. To vein the leaves, just take your knife and make little veins with the back of the knife. And all of this is fun. And if you find you're stressing out, just turn on some nice music or put on a fun movie. Chill these too. Look just like the apple leaves on my trees. So two things before we start assembling. Make an egg wash of a tablespoon or so of heavy cream and one large egg yolk. That's the wash that goes on the outside. Pick the apple of your choice and you put that right in the middle and brush the edges of the triangle with water. This helps stick the pastry together. And then lift this up. Keep a little flour handy and just pinch and abut the dough, pushing it together like that. Leave the top points open to expose the stem. So cute. You can egg wash it now the first time. And then again, after you chill. This will give a beautiful golden brown crust. Preheat at this point your oven to 400 degrees. Now your beautiful leaves, put some egg on the back and these get stuck right on your dumpling. So now I am just finishing egg washing all six dumplings, which can actually fit on one baking sheet on parchment. Don't forget the parchment paper. Have your oven preheated to 400 degrees. A second little touch up of the glaze will ensure an even brownness to your crust and you want it nice and brown and right in the oven, 25 to 35 minutes. So this is almost too pretty to eat, don't you think? What a wonderful dessert. It is one of the most charming and most delicious ways to serve an apple. Enjoy. Joining us from the test kitchen today is Sam Senovaratna with another take on the whoopie pie. So you're gonna show us the simple recipe for chocolate. A really easy, really Good. easy chocolate one. Okay, so we're gonna start by creaming our butter and sugar as usual. I have a stick of butter. Actually, Martha, you can start with the dry ingredients okay, while I, will. I do that. So the flour, cocoa, baking powder. Okay, so one so and a third cups of all-purpose flour. And I'm gonna put my stick of butter right in there. So why'd you cut the butter up so small? <laughs> you always ask me that. <laughs> I wanted to get it to room temperature as fast as possible. Oh, okay. <laughs> but if it's at room temperature, you don't have to cut it up. You don't need to cut it that up. That small. And I have a cup of sugar in the mixer. So I'm using all-purpose flour, right? Mm -hmm. And three quarters of a cup of cocoa powder. <laughs> Cream the butter until fluffy. It takes about a minute, two minutes. One and a half teaspoons of baking soda. Mm -hmm. And a half a teaspoon of baking powder. So are these like little fluffy chocolate cookies? Basically? Exactly. Cross between a cookie and a cake. These ones are really tender and fluffy and nice. Half a teaspoon of salt. Whisk all that together. I'm going to add one cup of room temperature buttermilk to my mixture. So chocolate with buttermilk. Yeah, what do you think? Uh, no, I think, it's, <laughs> I think it keeps the chocolate cakes moist. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and the tang is kind of a nice addition. Yeah, I, I agree. 
our second to last thing is one of your beautiful eggs and a teaspoon of vanilla. We can add our dry ingredients. Let's turn this down a little so we don't splash. I love this, you don't have to alternate adding wet or dry, just dump it all in there. It's super easy. Great. Temperature of the oven, and it should be set by now. It should be preheated. We want to do it at 400 degrees, which is, seems kind of warm, but I think it helps them really spring up quickly. There. Thanks. You can come over here and show us how to form the cookies. So we're using scoops to make this job super easy. They're one ounce scoops, so about two tablespoons each. They don't spread too much, so I think I can pretty much get 12 on a sheet. And how many whoopie pies does this recipe make? It makes about 16 whoopie pies. So these bake once they're in the oven for? 10 to 12 minutes. So set your timer. So now the filling. Now we're gonna make a classic American buttercream, which is just basically a stick of butter and confectioner's sugar. And we have three cups that we've already sifted. I'm gonna add that. I may just beat this up for a second. So but, cold butter or room temperature? No, this is room temperature butter that I cut into little cubes. And we're gonna add vanilla extract. Oh, and you have a little milk. And I have a little bit of milk. It's a quarter cup of milk, but I'm basically just gonna see what it looks like. Okay. And add a little more if we need it. And here are the whoopie pies themselves. They're okay. so nicely baked, and they're pretty, and they're so dark. <laughs> I think it's ready. I think that looks nice. Great. I'm gonna add my sugar. Turn it down a little. Should I add a little milk? Yeah. And that's room temperature milk. Everything room temperature so the butter stays nice and soft. Half a teaspoon of mm -hmm. uh, vanilla. And what's the extra cup for? So we're going to start with three cups and then add another cup of sugar, depending on what the texture looks like. It needs to be kind of stiff, so a little more sugar will do that. I think we could add a little more and the rest of the milk. I see that you have a pastry bag and a scoop. Which would you use? I think I think I would use the pastry bag because it makes that nice puffy circle. Okay, so I'm gonna use a pastry bag. Okay. I am going to fill these cookies. Let me taste. Mmm, really think? good. A nice flavor, all that butter and vanilla. I'm gonna be my mother. <laughs> Scrape all of that off, please. <laughs> my mother was such a economical person. <laughs> okay. Keep it in there. The pastry bag's gonna make this job really fast. I hope. <laughs> you only put the filling on half. That's the fun mm. part. <laughs> and be generous with your filling because that's just as good as the outside, I that's think. True. Those look <gasps> fantastic. Look how cute. How long will these stay? Well wrapped, you could keep them for up to a week. Which well, is good. <laughs> one for you. Thanks, Martha. And one for me. Perfect for a bake sale, a lunchbox treat, or a picnic. Thanks, Sam. And see you all on the next episode of Martha Bakes. Use a large offset spatula to cover the tops and sides of a crumb-coated cake. Add a generous amount of frosting to the top of the cake. Using the tip of a small offset spatula, create swoops and swirls in an almost S formation. This method works best with soft, creamy frostings. 